Supervisor Rich Forster with your Supervisor Report from August 27, 2013. Uh, starting off the meeting, we had Kimberly Pruitt in from uh, Congressman Tom McClintock's office. A <coughs> uh, couple of the things that uh, Ms. Pruitt talked about were an uh, update on the uh, rim fire. You know, one thing that uh, I want people to remember, the rim fire has decimated Tuolumne County. Now that it's into Yosemite, is when it's getting all the attention, but uh, Tuolumne County is where most of the burning has occurred. Most of the people have been evacuated. I know areas like uh, Area 12 on Aging have uh, stepped up and, and uh, started serving people. I know American Red Cross and all the other agencies, but uh, Emmer County has a fund to establish for the rim fire. But uh, right now it's at 187,000 acres, about 20% contained. So they need uh, a lot of help there, as well as those people that have been displaced out of the structures. Ms. Pruitt also talked about the uh, yellow-legged frog in the hearing that happened in um, Tuolumne County. This was a couple weeks ago. So um, with that, we're still fighting the listing, and um, who knows what's going to happen. They have extended the common date. Into, uh, d into November, with April being the date that they're going to make a decision. Sometimes it's almost uh, a, a predisposed conclusion that they're going to do it with the U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, and uh, many times that seems to be the case. Unfortunately, uh, they need to do the financial impact studies and other things. Um, <clears throat> for instance, um, as with the uh, rim fire, it's not just Tuolumne County that's suffering the economic impacts. Sure, they have the, the pain and suffering associated with it, but uh, right now the smoke is going all the way up to Reno, Lake Tahoe. Uh, Supervisor Plass indicated yesterday that the um, three-day weekend coming up, the rentals at uh, Plaza's resort, it was fully booked, and 70% of those rentals have canceled because of the smoke. So it's really an economic impact all the way around. Uh, on our meeting, uh, we did talk about closure of uh, the county gas tanks at our courtyard. This doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is because, one, it's kind of an ownership issue a little bit that you're, you have the uh, tanks. People are able to fill up when they want to. Uh, you have some security issues there that the court, county courtyard is a little more secure, some feel, than other areas. The big issues, though, is uh, wh what's it going to cost us down the road? We have a $20,000 five-year inspection that needs to be paid on that if the tanks stay in the ground. We have uh, potential cleanup costs of fifty dollars to $60,000 when the tanks, when and if the tanks. It's not uh, when, but uh, just if they need to be pulled out and when that will happen because it is a surety. That'll be uh, fifty to 60000 if there's no remediation. If there is remediation, we do have a $2 million state fund that we can go to. The board ultimately decided to go with the staff plan, the staff recommendation after much discussion. Uh, the tanks have to be thoroughly cleaned, uh, all power disconnected. At least for a year, you can go with that cycle. We can see what the request for proposal turns up with a local vendor who can supply fuel. The good thing is there are multiple fueling sites uh, around the county. It looks like about five or six. So it might save on transportation for us. But we have uh, other agencies like uh, Amateur Transit, ACRA, and others that also use the county fueling system. Uh, there will be an impact to them. The vendor has indicated they can service them. Um, we had Joe Rose in, who's the attorney for the Amateur County Employees Association. Uh, this is a new association that was formed for employees that um, would like to or don't feel like they're being fairly represented by SEIU 1021. The uh, issue here is um, the ACEA uh, feels that the board should move forward and uh, go ahead with the, um, the vote, counting the votes for people that want to go ahead and have an election for people that want to get out of um, SEIU, see if the employees want to go in that direction. The board was uh, recommendation from our county council was so maybe we don't want to do that. Our own rules say that uh, six months is when you have uh, time to collect the votes and process them. It's been uh, well over six months now, almost a year. The issue here is the Public Employee Relations Board uh, rules say one year. So um, PERB has been ruling against the county consistently saying that uh, you need to follow the rules that are on the books. Now we'll see if PERB 
says, the Public Employee Relations Board says, you need to follow the rules that are on the books. Um, we, sometimes we don't expect that to happen. Uh, there are, um, the appointments to the PER board are primarily union representatives in their former life. So um, sometimes it's a, a predisposed conclusion there too. The um, county grand jury was in on their report to um, the board. There were two areas that they questioned, basically county administration and budget issues in our health and human services department and uh, the transparency issues there. Basically the, the um, Mental Health Services Act at the state level makes it very difficult for people to access information. There is a website, but um, the website that uh, is with our Health and Human Services Department is being updated now. So we are trying to make some of the changes. Got to give um, Ms. Bourgeois and uh, the uh, grand jury a lot of credit with uh, coming up with common sense uh, recommendations and uh, really being there to ask the questions and uh, make sure that uh, the board is still looking forward to implementing those changes. Uh, we had uh, support from the board on HR 1526. This is a federal bill on a restoring healthy forests for healthy communities. You have um, Republicans on one side that want to move ahead and harvest trees and uh, limit the ability of litigation to take place. Uh, interesting that uh, some of the Democrats on the other side want to do the same thing, but they don't want the limits on litigation. Uh, without that, you're not going to have much harvesting take place. A lot of other issues on our board agenda. To access those, um, you'll have to go to our website or you can call 223-647-0. Uh, uh, talk to any board member or our CAO or come on into the office and see us. This is Supervisor Richard Forster. We are going to a break. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.